Make sure the camera's just on him, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, no, no. The overhead lights on. will probably help me. You want that on or not? Oh, that would help, yeah. yeah. What time is it? Is it show time. You say three twenty six and three thirty. No rest of the year. Um, okay, um, thank you all for coming. And um I particularly appreciate the members of the public who've come on again very short notice to share this event. Uh, a number of years ago at the legislature, I said that Valley View was a core institution of Orange County. There are people in this county who hate government and who hate when government succeeds. And they have had as an agenda for a number of years essentially stopping Orange County government. First, by the debacle at the government center, taking years and years to replace that and causing the government to spend years debating what was a very obvious situation. And concurrently, and more tragically, because human lives are involved, repeatedly disrupting and really ruining the lives of our senior citizens who live there and others who live there, by continuing to threaten the excellent institution, which is Valley View. I view this as more than a legal issue, and I've said that publicly, and many of the people in this room agree. This is much more than a legal issue. It's a moral issue. Uh, it's an issue about what we do to assist those who've given a great deal to our society and who want to live out their lives near their relatives, near communities they know, and essentially in, in some degree of peace. What the new county executive has done has other tragic elements to it. A person runs for political office, a young person who's obviously highly ambitious, and he tells the public one thing on a critical issue, and within a few months of coming into office he reverses course on a very significant issue and starts doing something really the opposite. And then having done that, he continues to tell the public that's not his objective. His objective is to keep Valley View. It's a strange way of keeping it. This, as I said at the legislature last week, erodes public confidence. It makes people more cynical. In a society where we fight wars for democracy, we have few people participating in our political process, and those few are made to look foolish, really, because they're participating in what becomes a charade. Now, that's really by way of background, uh, because it, it's, in a sense, distinct from what we're doing here today. But it is relevant because it informs what we're doing. It has to be a reason for what we're doing. The reason is that this facility houses our senior citizens, has been a phenomenally successful institution, and could be better. Could be better. I don't say it's perfect. I've said before, and other people in this room have said before, there should be more programming for senior citizens in the facility. There should be more stimulation, not less. But that should be in the context of a familiar location for people. Now, in the days since the legislature voted, with very little effort, I might add, by me and anyone on my staff, about 100 people have come forward and wanted to be plaintiffs in this litigation, wanted to be petitioners. Staff members, members of the public who I've told don't have standing and they shouldn't really involve themselves because they're just going to complicate matters, and residents, many, many residents. Uh, and remember, these are people who are living essentially in wheelchairs. I mean, that's what's happening. And they are going around the facilities in their wheelchairs, gathering signatures from each other. I know that in all the years of involvement I've had in government, I was never more moved than I was on April 4th at about 10 to 2 when I walked into the auditorium at the emergency center and saw literally a row of people in wheelchairs getting ready to speak their minds. I knew that what they were going to say would be powerful, but the sight of them is powerful because it took great effort for them to get there. And it showed in a very demonstrative way what this was about. 
Today, earlier today, we filed a petition in State Supreme Court in Orange County, which petition seeks to undo the blatantly, blatantly illegal conduct of the county. And what was illegal? Well, to put it very simply, when you alienate property or set in motion a process by which the alienation of that property is no longer in your control, but within the control of a independent entity, under New York State County Law 215, you must do so by a two-thirds vote, a supermajority. You cannot get around that by various contrivances or anything else. That's what you must do. And the Orange County Legislature was warned of that because I told them that before they voted. And they discussed it in their caucus, and they didn't have a good answer, but they did it anyway. They did it anyway. Someone raised it in their caucus, I'm told, and, well, let a judge decide. Look, the law is very plain. Those of you watching, the laws have to be followed. Uh, there's no imperial county executive scene in, in this county that I'm aware of. The law must be followed. And the law was not followed. And the law is clear. Now, people talk about Section 1411 of the uh, not-for-profit law in the state of New York, which does allow for a local development corporation. While this is not part of our lawsuit, because I don't want to get distracted on policy issues, I'm focusing on legal issues, the fact is that a local development corporation has no business in this anyway. It has nothing to do with this. Local development corporations are established in New York to spur, to spur, S-P-U-R, economic development and job creation. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with what we're doing here. It's, again, an abuse, a misuse, and people in government should know this, and they should understand the purposes of the creation of these kinds of of entities and not misuse them for some other purpose, to have them disappear as soon as Valley View is sold. What, what does that have to do with the proper public purpose? Zero. Again, we're not arguing that. We're arguing more technical issues. The most technical issue is that when you alienate land, whether by a long-term lease or by the actual sale, you must have a supermajority. They did not. They had 12 votes. But there's a second issue. And you know they're aware of the second issue because all of us can read the resolution. And the resolution makes very clear they're aware of the second issue. The second issue is you cannot significantly alter, abolish, modify the functions of a county department unless you do so by a local law. That's part of our charter. A charter is what you live by. Again, you don't like the charter? Well, we'll just ignore the charter. We'll, again, we'll act like the charter doesn't exist. Well, again, a nation of laws. A nation of laws can't do that. The people who've just gotten elected and in control in Orange County can't do that any more than Richard Nixon could do that. You can't do it. But again, they're doing it. So what are they saying? They're saying in their resolution, we're not changing the department. Well, <laughs> if Valley View is the department or the unit, and its function, the unit's function, is to run Valley View, and that's now not happening and intended not to happen, then you've significantly altered the function. There's no other way to describe it, and you pass a local law. Now, a local law in this context, there's no requirement for a supermajority, but there is a requirement for a local law. Now, you ask yourselves, and not everyone knows this, why didn't they just pass a local law? <laughs> well, there's a reason they didn't pass a local law, because if you pass a local law, you have a right to a permissive referendum. The public has a right to collect signatures, and with those signatures, to have a public referendum on the wisdom or prudence or popularity, even, if you will, of the policy. And this is a dastardly policy. It's a policy that is not popular. It's a policy that politicians want to get rid of in the first four months of their four-year term, hoping people will forget what they've done. That's what this is about. It's about the fact that Nan Hayworth is running again for Congress, and the last thing she needs running around with Steve Newhouse all over this county is this issue tagging behind her. So let's get it done in April. So by August or September, everyone will have forgotten. That's what's going on. The public is not stupid. They're not involved, but they're not stupid. Perhaps they're not involved because they're not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but for those of us who are involved and do care about the political process, it's tragic 
because events like this are the origin of the apathy which so many feel. We just elected somebody. He didn't even run on this. We didn't even know he's doing it, and here he is. What's the purpose of having an election? Why should we vote? He's not even telling us what he's going to do. So we do have strong hopes for this lawsuit. The lawsuit has these two principal points, that there's been a constructive abolition of this department, whatever the resolution says. It was not done by local law. It was not done by local law purposely to evade the charter because they didn't want to have a referendum. And secondly, they're alienating property to another entity, which under their own resolution is in control of how long the county will have that property and is intended, in fact, to sell that property to someone else. And they've done that without a supermajority. Now, there's only one other thing I want to say, and that is that one of the legislators today was kind enough to send my son Sam, who's standing right over here, uh, various information, which is very interesting information. The in information suggests that there are some now in the legislature who want to modify the charter. And they want to modify the charter in a very specific way. They want to create a situation where the charter says you only need a majority to alienate land. Oh, God. So this, if anything, would be an admission. Mm -hmm. This is an admission that they're even considering this and putting it before the Rules Committee. Mm -hmm. but. But, as I asked Sam to do, and he very quickly did, we did some research about changing the charter.